Welcome to another Rails quick tip. This is going to be about configuring your app. We use your own custom time and date formats. Um, Rails comes stock with these by default with a couple that you might be used to or know of. They're commonly labeled short or long or ordinal or all these kind of funky names relative to certain types of data you might be rendering. Uh, the general idea is to take like timestamp attributes when you generate a, a resource, whether it's updated at or created at, and make them human readable as opposed to something that's crazy time format that the database prefers, um, like UTC time. If you've ever tried to read that as an actual date and time, it's confusing, but that is more of like a universal time language. So it's it goes you know back and forth basically but this is considered more or less how you would want to present the time as opposed to save it and manipulate it of course i feel like if you've in the rails and ruby world enough you might have seen this page before it is the ruby docs and um this is on a very old version because i just googled it but i think the current version is like three something but the similar page will be on the the current version you might be using and it's just got these um I guess they're called placeholders. I'm not really sure what they're called. Uh, directives is what they're calling them. And it's kind of just a way to format your your timestamp or date in a given way. Uh, it allows you to customize it and commonly use this thing called, uh, I guess, I don't even know how to pronounce it, string format time. So it's just short for that. Uh, and you do this in line in like your views or something and it's it works perfectly. It, it does, I don't have anything set up yet, but if you were to do it like strf time and then you have some like post.created at and then you do this, it should render fine and that works all fine and dandy, but then you're, you're kind of succumbed to having to come to this guide. You forget every time what the heck characters you need to use. So this, this is kind of a little toolbox that I implement that I've seen actually I stole from, I think a rails developer worked with a long time ago. Um, I think it's just kind of a standard nowadays, but it's, it doesn't need to be in your own, but the idea is you create a new, um, initializer and I'm going to call it time formats. And I've created just a vanilla rails app here, by the way. So I just called it time format fun for the fun of it. And inside is, is blank slate. And I actually have on my clipboard, some predetermined ones that I want to use and they tap into Ruby's date and time functions. So you're just extending those and the short is already there longs there. So these can come stock with rails. You can call them anything you want though, and set them in this file. So when your app essentially boots, you're able to use these, um, immediately at your disposal. So here I've got some comments just to give you some ideas of how it's formatted in the end. So we're just using these characters you see over in the Ruby documentation, and it's just kind of making your own um, brain not suffer so much when you go to format a date that you might need to say it's a created ad or updated for a post or some sort of resource that you need a specific look and feel for. So this is a way to do that. I have terrible ways of naming things, but I'll, I'll tend to do, um, time dot date formats. And I'll just say like the nice one or, or something stupid like that. And then it'll kind of output and you can even add strings. So maybe we'll copy this one. And then it has the time as you can see right there. So we could say at that, so you can add put like it would end up looking like something like this, maybe thirst at 3 PM, something like that. So we can test this out. Um, I'm going to keep these, I'm probably going to comment these out. We'll keep it as is, see if the, the app boots up and we'll just, uh, re you want to restart your server. I'm using again, just a vanilla rails app. So there's no like build build step or anything. It's just a Rails server in the background. Then I'll go over to our app. It does boot. We're on our welcome screen though. So we need some sort of page. So I'll generate that real quick. So I'll rails generate static controller static. Actually, I'm going to actually make a resource, delete controller static. I'll undo that. And then rails generate scaffold post title string body text, just a general starting point. So obviously there's a lot of junk here we don't need, but that's just a, a way to get something into the app and we'll want to migrate our database. 
Okay, and then I'll go ahead and make the um, routes are. Well, that's kind of cool. I'm on Rails 7.1, by the way, so it's the latest and greatest. You can actually go to up. I just noticed this. That's cool. A little up status. If it's green, it's good. Yay. <laughs> I think that's just a way to tell some API that everything's good. Uh, okay, so now we have a post. Obviously, this looks very plain, but you can say test post, test body of post. We'll just create that. Great. We'll go back to posts. We'll show the posts, and then I'll go edit the uh, show. And what I want to show, they're rendering the partial here. I guess I'll just go into the partial and we'll say, and we can say I created Ellen. Just to show by example, created at, and then I like to do two formatted string. If you've been in Rails long enough, there used to be just a underscore 2s that still works. I think it's depreciated. And then you could pass in, remember that one we made was nice. We could see if this works. So we'll save that down and there it is right there. So if you go back to long and if it's got a time component, it will render that since it's part of the time class or date, depending on the, I guess, criteria. So short, similar scenario. That's pretty nice too. So I'll just put the nice one, terrible name for that, but it's just something I wanted to use. And then if you wanted to get fancy and say, oh, this is updated, last updated, let's just say update, and then we'll do the similar thing up to here. Updated. Cool, so if we go update it, maybe I'll add some punctuation update and uh, you'll see the difference. One was created two minutes ago. This one is updated two, min two minutes ago or basically right now. So that's essentially it. I wanted to just show you that the time formats themselves are a lifesaver when it comes to remembering a lot of these things. So I like to make the names really short and sweet. Um, and then you can just go from there. So obviously you won't have, maybe you will have a lot of these depending on your app, but I think a good maybe practice is to consider only using one or two or three throughout, um, depending on your needs. Consistency is key. And I think if you can keep that into your product and the UX of it, it'll be uh, a lot easier for your users to use. All right, that's it for now.